Hello, welcome back. This is section 10.2, Eclipses and Tides. Our aim for today is to draw the positions of the Earth, Moon, and Sun during lunar and solar eclipses, and also to describe how the Moon and Sun cause tides. So what is a lunar eclipse? A lunar eclipse is when the full moon moves into the Earth's shadow. So, if you are looking at the sun, we're always going to look for the, the three main things and figure out where they belong to cause this to happen. A lunar eclipse is when the uh, earth blocks the sun's rays from hitting the moon. So during a full moon, when they're all lined up, sun, earth, moon, if the, if the earth is lined up in such a way that it stops all the sunlight from hitting the moon, you actually, this only lasts for about an hour and a half, but you'll see the entire um, cycle of phases occur in just about under 90 minutes. So a lunar eclipse occurs in the full moon position when the Earth is between the sun and the moon. So let's draw this. Okay, so if you draw on the sun here, the Earth, and the moon. Hi, okay, this is... This is the positioning that would cause a lunar eclipse. What moon phase would this be in? This is your full moon phase. So this is what a lunar eclipse looks like. This is showing it projected in an arc, but it actually just happens with the position in one spot. But all of this, you'll have a full moon, and you'll see the Earth start to block the sunlight until it completely blocks it, and then it starts to look red due to refraction of sunlight um, beneath the Earth, and you'll see the entire cycle of phases then start right here. You see it's dark, and then you'll see more and more until you get back to the full moon of phase again. Solar eclipse is when the moon blocks the sun from reaching Earth. This happens far less frequently than a uh, lunar eclipse and also it happens over a much smaller portion of the Earth and it lasts for only about a minute or two. So for this to happen you need the Sun with the Moon in between the Earth and the Sun. Okay and with this the um, in this here the Earth is on this side okay and the Moon is projecting a shadow casting a shadow onto the Earth blocking the Moon from from view from the Earth. The new moon briefly moves between Earth and the Sun. Let's draw this. So for a solar eclipse, the moon is between the Sun and the Earth. Let's keep in mind that the moon revolves around the Earth counterclockwise. So at no time is the moon going to leave its orbit around the Earth. It's never going to be found on the other side of the Sun. Just keep that in mind. Moon revolves around the Earth. So because the Earth revolves around the Sun, the Moon also revolves around the Sun, but it always stays in its orbital path around the Earth. So the phase shown here would be our new Moon phase. Okay, this is showing a solar eclipse. You can see the Moon um, blocks out. This is a total solar eclipse here. It's blocking out the Sun and it creates this halo effect of the Sun around it. And this is showing this happen over the course of a few minutes. As the, this is look, looking at a, a filtered lens that so it could look at the Sun. You should never ever look at the Sun with your eyes. And you see the Moon moving in front of the Sun and blocking it and then coming right off. Here's a partial eclipse, where the moon is just blocking part of the sun. Why don't these happen every month? Since we said a lunar eclipse happens in full moon phase, and a solar eclipse happens in new moon phase, why don't we have this all the time? Well, even though the moon is orbiting around the Earth, it is not orbiting in perfectly aligned with um, our orbit. So in other words, its orbit is tilted compared to our orbit. So you can see here, its orbit is a little bit tilted compared to ours. So because of that, even when we have a new and full moon, it's not perfectly aligned where it would actually block out the sun or the Earth would be right in line with it to cause a lunar eclipse. Okay, so the eclipses are rare because the moon's orbit is tilted 5 degrees compared to Earth's orbit. It causes tides. So moon, the moon 
and the sun are both involved in creating tides on Earth's surface. It's actually caused by gravitational attraction. So gravity between the moon and the sun create tides on Earth's surface. Um, it actually creates a bulge on the opposite side um, and the side facing the moon. When we, and the Earth rotates in and out of the high tide over the course of a day. So Earth's rotation causes locations to move through the bulge, resulting in a high tide. How often do tides change? We have two high tides and two low tides a day. So about every six hours, the tide changes. So we go from a high to a low, a low to a high, and a high to a low, and then back to a high again each day. Two highs and two lows. So one complete cycle takes 12 hours and 25 minutes. High to low, back to high and then low, high, back to low. Either of those takes about 12 hours and 25 minutes. Keeping in mind, tides are a cyclic event, so these can be plotted out. You can go online and look at the tide schedule if you're a boater and see what the tides will be months, months, and you know years in advance. We know exactly when they'll occur because they occur in a cycle. Okay, so this is how this works. We're looking down here on the Earth at the North Pole. Now, if you have the sun and the moon lined up, this creates a gravitational attraction at this part of the Earth. Um, you can see that the, it's showing a bulge. This is obviously a little exaggerated. There's this bulge created, um, and it actually creates from the other side as well. So you end up with high tides at these two locations. Now keep in mind that the, the Earth is, ro is rotating at, during the course of a day, and the moon is going to stay in a pretty similar s position to the Earth for that day. Remember, the moon takes a whole month to revolve around the Earth. So during the 24 hours that we're in this position, this over here would be a high tide on this side and on this side. And over here we would have a low tide. You see the water is not bulged up over here. So the side facing the moon will always be in high tide and the side opposite. And then the two sides that are not um, you know, in line with the moon would be in a low tide. Now remember that the Earth is rotating. So every, you know, this part of Earth right here in a few hours, from like six hours later, is going to be in the high tide. And then six hours later will be in the low tide. Six hours later in high tide again and then six hours later back in low tide. So the part, Earth is rotating in and out of the high tide and the low tide over the course of the day. Okay, there's two types of, um, of special tides that we're going to talk about next. Um, but here, this is now showing if the moon is located not right in line with the sun. If it's, um, this is a 90 degree angle between the, um, the Earth, the moon, and the sun. The high tides will be over here. And the low tides will be over here. And again, we're looking down at the North Pole, so Earth will be rotating in and out of the high tides over the course of the day. Um, there's two special tides. When we have the sun and the moon working together with gravity, they'll pull on Earth the most. You can see that these tides are exaggerated, the much higher high tides and lower low tides. And then when the moon is in a first or third quarter position, when it's in 90 degree angles, we have a much more, uh, less extreme uh, type of tides. So let's talk about those. A spring tide. So a spring tide is when we have the highest high tides and the lowest low tides. And this is when sun, earth, and moon are in a line. So when do we have the sun, earth, and moon lined up? This occurs during our full and new moon phases. We have the sun, moon, earth, or sun, earth, moon. When they're all lined up in, a, in one line, that's a spring tide. The gravity works together between the sun and the um, moon and creates the highest highs and lowest lows. And this was a situation that actually happened when Hurricane Sandy occurred. We were in an astronomical high tide, which means it was a spring tide, and that's why we had such dramatic changes in our um, flooding during that event. A neap tide is a much less exaggerated tide. It's when we have the 90 degree angles. So there's two times when we have 90 degree angles. We end up with very average high tides and low tides. And this is when we're at 90 degree angles, which occurs at our first quarter and third quarter positions. And this is just another picture depicting our neap tide. It would be at our 90 degree angle positions at first quarter and third quarter. And your spring tides will be at the new moon phase and the full moon phase when everything's lined up. It's looking at the bulges created during these situations, much higher high tides. Of course, this is exaggerated for the spring tide when they're lined up. 
and a much more average tide during the neap tides. Something else to keep in mind is the moon has a much bigger effect on tides on Earth. Since it's so much closer to Earth, its gravity has a much stronger effect, actually. Even though the sun is so much bigger, it's much further away, 93 mi million miles away. So even though it has an effect, the moon's effect is much more important to our tides than the sun's. But they both, both do have an effect. And that actually ends our 10.2 note. See you next time.